In this video, we're going to be learning about entropy. The symbol for entropy is given by a large S. And the definition for entropy is the measure of disorder or randomness in a substance. So let's think about this situation. Here we have a solid with its particles. Here we have a liquid. And this is the particle arrangement in a gas. Now we can see that as you go from a solid to a liquid, or from a liquid to a gas, the movement of particles increases. This also means that there is more disorder going in this direction. Since there is more disorder, we can say that there's going to be more entropy, as the particles are becoming more and more randomly arranged. And as a result, this gives us a positive entropy change. So one thing that affects entropy is change in physical state. Let's have a look at some other factors that can also affect entropy. Dissolving or dissolution can also affect entropy. Here we have a solid, again we can see it has particles in fixed positions. After dissolving, those particles are now going to be free to move around in solution. So, dissolution has caused an increase in disorder. And as a result, we have more entropy when it is a solution compared to when it's a solid. Another factor is change in the number of particles. Here we have a substance. We can see that each molecule has two atoms of nitrogen bonded to four atoms of oxygen. This breaks down to give us two molecules of nitrogen dioxide. So as we can see, on the left we have three particles, on the right those three particles have broken down into six particles. There's been no change in state, however, on the right, we have more particles, so there is more disorder or randomness on the right. And as a result, there is more entropy. So whenever the number of particles increases, that also means that entropy also increases. Another factor is evaporation. So on the left, I've got a solution. And on the right, some molecules have begun to evaporate. That means we've created some gaseous molecules. And looking back at the first example, we know that gases have more randomness than liquids or solutions. So this means there's more disorder when it's evaporated. And again, that means there's more entropy. So let's look at this reaction. A plus B makes C and D. Now notice there's been no change in state. Gases have remained as gases. And also the number of molecules have not changed either. We have two molecules on the left and we have two molecules on the right. So what does that mean? Is there going to be no entropy change here? In this kind of situation, it will be difficult to say straight away if there will be more entropy or less entropy. So we'll have to do some calculations. First, we'll work out the total entropy of the reactants and also the total entropy of the products. This symbol here that you see is called sigma. And sigma just means adding up all the values. So to work out change in entropy, we have to do the following. The total entropy of the products take away the total entropy of the reactants. Okay, so here's an example. Calculate the entropy change in this reaction. Now notice, now notice in this reaction, both sides are gases. So let's work out the total entropy change. First of all, we're going to work out the reactants. So we have four molecules of ammonia, so that's going to be four times 193. And we also have five molecules of oxygen which is going to be 5 times 205. In total, that gives us 1797. Moving on to the products, we're going to do 4 times nitrogen monoxide, which is 4 times 211, plus 6 times water, which is 6 times 189. This gives us 1978. So we're going to use this equation and plug in our numbers. And the final answer is positive, that means the reaction has become more random. And the final answer is plus 181. Notice the units are joules per kelvin per mole. Also, entropy is positive in this reaction, meaning that we have increased the disorder of particles. So here we have a figure, and the question says, explain in terms of molecules why entropy is zero when the temperature is zero kelvin. Now, zero kelvin is also known as absolute zero which is the lowest temperature a substance can be at. So over here we have zero Kelvin. That means the substance is going to be a solid. However, because there's no energy, 
that means the particles will have literally no vibration. So that means there's going to be no randomness or no disorder. And since there's no disorder, that means there's no randomness and hence there's no entropy. Okay, here's the next part of the question. Explain in terms of molecules why the first part of the graph is a line that slopes up from the origin. So the question is talking about this part of the curve. Now up to here, it's still a solid. However, we can see that the entropy has increased. So this must mean that the particles have gained some energy, so they are vibrating, and as a result, there's going to be some randomness. Here's the next part of the question. In terms of the behavior of molecules, explain why L2 is longer than L1. So L1 is this line, and this represents the substance turning from a solid into a liquid, or in other words, it's melting. Of course, we know that this will cause the entropy to increase. L2 is this line, and this represents a liquid evaporating into a gas. And again, that also causes entropy to increase. However, we can see that the L2 jump is much greater than the L1 jump. So this means there's going to be a greater entropy change. And that's because there's a bigger change in this order. So going from a liquid to a gas has a bigger change in this order compared to going from a solid to a liquid. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.